Hello and welcome to Delicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Trokakis. On the menu today, we have Roman rags with quinoa and peas. And for dessert, we have a lovely lightened tiramisu. So let's get started. The first thing I want to start working on is my quinoa. And the quinoa is a really quick cooking grain. Um, and so we, uh, and we're going to do that first because this is a meal that's going to come together really quick. So I'm going to add a little bit of oil, about one tablespoon, in my pot here. There we go. Oh, a little more. There we go. Perfect. So in this pot, I've added one tablespoon of oil, and now I'm going to add one cup of quinoa. As you can see, it's really tiny little grains. This, uh, what's What's special about this quinoa is that, um, or this grain, is that it has a high quality protein in comparison to some of the other grains. It means that the, this particular grain has all of the essential amino acids, whereas uh, some of the other grains don't. They lack certain amino acids, so making them what's called um, an incomplete protein. And depending on how many of the essential amino acid it contains, it will, um, um, it will be either incomplete protein or a complete protein. So this got really hot, so I'm going to, there we go, add this here. And what I'm trying to do here is to um, sort of coat the grain with a little bit of oil so that when it cooks, it doesn't get all lumpy. It stays nice and fluffy. It's sort of, this is that same initial step that you do when you make risotto. Uh, so, sort of a way of, of um, flavoring the grain at its core. So there we go. It kind of toasted a little bit too, and it brings out some of the flavor. So then to that, I'm going to add two cups of chicken stock. And here's the second. So now I'm going to give it a quick stir and lower the heat to a simmer. It's not boiling yet, but it will, so I'm going to just lower the heat and have it cook slowly for about 10 to 15 minutes while I work on the rest of the menu. So that's, I'm going to keep an eye on it as we go along. As I've mentioned, we are going to make an enlightened, lightened tiramisu. Now, the interesting thing about tiramisu is that um, you don't have to um, bake the cookies because you always, you, these are, uh, you buy them and they come, um, and they come, they, these are called um, Savoyardi and they come, they look like this. You could make them, but in this recipe, these bought ones actually work really well. So in tiramisu, what we're going to do is we're going to make our cream with the eggs, the egg yolks and the egg whites. And then what I'm doing to make it lighter is instead of using a lot of the mascarpone cheese, which is the main ingredient in, in the cream for tiramisu, I'm going to substitute most of that cream with um, yogurt, with vanilla yogurt. So I'm going to get that. I'm going to get my yogurt. Done with the yogurt is I've actually strained it, even though this is the Greek yogurt and, it, and it's thick already, but I really, for this recipe, I like it even thicker. So what I've done is put it in a sieve like this and, and um, let the, all the, the liquid com, you know, come out and pour out of it. So I put in about two cups of yogurt in there and I'm left with a little bit more than the one cup that I need. So I'm going to put this on the side here. So instead of leaving out the mascarpone altogether, I really reduced it drastically. The original recipe oftentimes calls for about one cup and I'm just using two tablespoons, which is a fraction of the original amount. And I'm going to add that to my egg yolks, which are here. So I'm going to beat these up a little bit. And to this, I'm also going to add a tablespoon of sugar. And this is down to the bottom here, so I'm going to cut some of my top off. That way it gets, it's easier to reach to the bottom here. So I'm going to use about one tablespoon in here. And you want to, you want to um, flavor each 
each le each food, each ingredient that you put in, and it gives um, the dish that much more depth of flavor. So sugar. Then I'm going to add my um, two tablespoons of mascarpone cheese. And that's sort of like the Italian version of um, it's the Italian version of uh, cream cheese. Actually, we were in Greece over the summer, and we were at this restaurant, and they had this particular cheese. And my husband was asking them, "What, well, what kind of cheese is this?" And he called it whatever he called it, and he said, well, you know, it's the American version of, uh, it's our version of the American cream cheese. So. so I'm going to work this in, make sure that it's all nice and smooth. You could use, um, you know, a, a mixer, but I'm going to do it this way, because I will use a mixer in a little bit. Actually, the other thing that would work really good, too, is a whisk. I should be using that now, but so you see, it's really um, you know dissolving in with the egg, the egg yolk. All right, so now I'm going to add my one cup of yogurt here that I've strained and made made it uh, really nice and thick. Uh, measure about one t one cup. And if it's, you know, it's approximate, this, what, that's what's nice about this recipe is that it's not exact because you don't actually cook anything. So here's about one cup. Mix that in here too. At this point, what I want to do, I'm going to come back and mix this really well. But what I really want to do as well at this, at this time is start this syrup that I'm going to need later on uh, as I make this recipe. So what I'm going to make is a sugar syrup. And what this is going to do, uh, so the sugar syrup is going to have a quarter cup of water and three quarters of a cup of sugar. Here's my three so. I'm going to measure about three quarters of a cup. See how easy that makes it when you cut off the top? You just pour it out. Put that in there. And I'm going to cook that to a syrup. And I'll show you in a minute, in a minute what I'm going to do with that. Stir it. I want to check on my quinoa. Oh, yeah, that's boiling away or simmering away, so that's good. And back here, so I'm going to work this, the uh, vanilla yogurt in here. You can use plain yogurt if you'd like as well. So what I have here is, um, what I have is um, no fat vanilla yogurt. And that's, that's all I could find. I couldn't find like the 1% or 2% or low fat. So it's just plain low, uh, no fat vanilla yogurt. I'm going to work this in really well. Okay, I'm going to set this aside. And what I'm going to, this is still, I'm still waiting for this to boil. That will boil soon. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do is um, get my chocolate ready that I'm going to need later on. And of course, this is from Winfrey Sponge and Chocolate. They have wonderful stuff in that, um, in that store. There's a, a shop in Stoneham, one up in Rowley. They have several of them. So there's some beautiful dark chocolate. And this is for the decoration that I'm going to use later, so I want to have it ready. So I'm going to actually use a box grater to shred some of the chocolate. And I'm going to use one of these wax pieces of paper. Oh, 
Okay, so that's about it for the chocolates. I'm going to put this on the side here. Sugar it, syrup here is um, boiling. Now, I'm going to start working on my um, egg whites. And so what I need the syrup for is what I'm going to, I'm going to make what's called an Italian meringue. And that is you, you uh, whip the, uh, beat the eggs to, um, to the, till they're, they're nice and thick. And then I'm going to add some of, the, um, some of the syrup. So I need a mixer. And I'm going to add just a little bit. I'm going to wait a little bit because I want to make sure that the syrup is ready when I'm ready to beat these. So I want to break these eggs up a little bit, these egg whites. Then I'm going to add a pinch of salt. And you, you want to beat these to like stiff peaks, just a little. And it helps with um, setting the, the um, meringue. I'm still waiting for this to. I don't. I don't want to caramelize this, so I don't want to cook it too too long. I think that looks about right. I'm going to beat this till it's foamy, and then I'm going to start adding the syrup slowly. And so what that does is essentially it sort of cooks the egg whites, and it gives it a real glistening, shimmering, and shiny appearance. So I'm going to start slowly. go. These look good like that. So I'm also going to add some of the, that syrup. I'm going to do this. I'm also going to add some of the syrup to the egg yolks. There we go. Done with this. Well, you can see, look, it's actually cooked some of the egg yolks right on the beaters, but that's all right. So now comes the fun part. We're going to combine these two. So you see how nice and thick the meringue is and how shiny it is? So, so this, with this meringue, if you wanted to, you could actually frost the cake. It's a, the, the bowl feels really warm because you, you've actually pretty much cooked the, um, egg, uh, the egg whites or the meringue. You know, eggs will cook at about 160 degrees. So if you bring, if you, you know, um, mix it with um, that kind of uh, temperature, it pretty much cooks them. And it's always important to add hot items to the eggs rather than the other way around. So we're going to work this in. And then what we're going to do is um, dip the, um, so we are the cookies or the lady fingers to in a in a uh, coffee liquid mixture with uh, I've added sugar to my coffee, but if you wanted to, you could actually add some rum or some cognac or some other favorite liquor. So here I have my coffee. I have about two cups of really nice dark brewed coffee, and I've added a tablespoon of sugar to that. So I'm going to get my bowl, oh, actually my, my pan here. I like the square ones. Um, so I'm going to get my cookies, my lady fingers. 
probably need about two of the packages. If you wanted to, you could actually dip these in, um, in tea instead of coffee. I've done that in the past. Oh, these smell really nice for packaged cookies. They have a nice sort of vanilla flavor or aroma. All right, so I'm just getting my ingredients ready here. So, I get the cookies, dip them. Just, you don't want to keep them in the coffee for a long time, just a quick dip. And just line them up in the pan like so. So now I'm just going to add uh, a layer of my cream here. Just put it all over. Usually um, it only takes about two layers. So this looks like a lot of cream, but um, it, it really isn't all that much at all. And we're making this first uh, in, in this menu today because I'm going to have to put this in the refrigerator to set. So you want to make sure that when you, when, if you, that you allow enough time for it to rest before you serve it. So you want it to be in the refrigerator at least a couple of, time, a couple of hours. There we go. So now we're going to add another layer of the cream here. And you know, you won't miss the mascarpone cheese at all. Actually, you might like it this way better. I do. My sister does as well. So you can make this on a Sunday and have it all week. And it's a really nice, light dessert. Make sure I spread it all over. So we do have a nice thick layer of this cream in the center. So some on top. And now, for the fun part, I'm going to put lots of chocolate on top. Really spread it on thick. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? And so I'm going to put this in the refrigerator and, and let it set for a couple of hours before we serve it. Our next step here now is to work on the Roman rags. And, then, and that's an interesting name. And the reason being is that you take a piece, a piece of steak and you really shred it to pieces or cut it in really thin, thin slices. And that's where the name comes from. And this is some really, this is a beautiful piece, cut of, a cut of meat, again, that I picked up at Calariso's uh, farm stand and garden center. Uh, you can, that's practically, um, practically you can do your whole grocery shopping there. They have many uh, new products each day. So the, the um, other thing I'm going to do now is cook my pea. I have some water boiling here. So I'm going to put in uh, about a cup of peas in there. And what I want to do is essentially just um, heat them up. So I need a scan cup, so I'm going to put those in there. And now I'm going to work on the meat. I'm going to cut this into little shreds, or little really thin slices, so you can see how quickly they will, they will cook. I'm just going to cut them across because I want them to be like little, little pieces of rags when I toss them with the quinoa. And I've put this in the freezer just to um, firm it up so it makes it easier to slice. See how little, uh, how thin or small the pieces are, really thin slivers practically. Those are. Now we're being told every day to eat less red meat, but a recipe like this is a great way to still enjoy that flavor of beef and, um, you know, uh, cut back on the amounts. 
Okay, I think this does it. So here I have my meat and I'm gonna turn on the heat. And I wanna get my skillet very, very hot. Check up my peas. So these are almost done, they're boiling. I'm gonna turn those off and strain them a little bit. I'm going to season the um, beef rags here with a little bit of salt and pepper. And that's about all the seasoning it needs. I'm also going to add about a tablespoon of oil to the skillet. There we go. And to that, I'm going to add two cloves of garlic. can be Italian if it doesn't have garlic in it, or Roman, there we go. It's a, just a big piece of, uh, big clove of garlic here. That goes in, and we cook those till they're light brown. Give these a quick toss, that get all that salt and uh, pepper evenly distributed. I'm going to put this in. I should probably do a little bit at a time. There we go. Turn this over quickly. See how quickly it cooks? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the meat to the side like so and I'm going to add the peas right alongside here. And the reason is so that just to infuse the peas with a little bit of flavor. So let that do its thing for about 30 seconds or so. And then in the meantime, I'm going to chop up some parsley. I need about two tablespoons. I feel like I'm picking parsley from the window. Uh, garden. So I'm going to chop this up and it's about two tablespoons. Two tablespoons. Toss everything back together. So this is going to end up being like a complete meal, a one dish complete meal. And if you didn't want to use peas, you, I would do some um, spinach is always a nice addition or some arugula or some uh, kale. I think kale would work out well too if you chopped it up really fine. So here's about two tablespoons of parsley that I'm going to add in. And then I'm also going to put in about a tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Get the seeds out of the way. Now I like to break these inner fibers with the fork and then it, it squeezes right out. So there's about Oh, there's one that I'm going to take out. And there we have it. So you've added the lemon juice, you have your parsley in here, and it's ready. Take it off the heat. Move this out of the way. 
And now I'm going to put that on top of the quinoa that it's been sitting here patiently waiting. Doesn't that look pretty? The little holes in it, the little, little steamed holes. So I'm going to get my plate, get my bowl here, and oh, I need a big spoon. Oh, here it is. I'm going to spoon this. I'll fluff it up a little bit first so you can see how it's like nice and fluffy. I'm going to pour that in my bowl. Oh, it smells, it's got like a nutty um, aroma to it. It's really very tasty. Oh, it smells so nice. There we go. And then on top of that, I'm going to add the beef rags. See how they wide the name? Little rags. Remove the, I remove the garlic. You can keep it in if you'd like. And I'm also actually going to spread a little bit more, um, sprinkle a little bit more parsley on top. I think I'll just do big leaves. I won't chop it. So here we have it. Isn't that beautiful? Vegetables, whole grains, meat, all in one dish. So now I'm going to get my tiramisu that's already uh, been uh, chilling in the refrigerator. So here we have it. And here is another delicious, quick, and complete meal. We have, today we made a um, Roman rags with quinoa and peas that took very little time to make. Uh, we took a piece of steak and we just chopped it up or shredded it into small pieces and cooked it really quick. We tossed it in with peas and then uh, we're topping the quinoa that cooked in about 10 to 15 minutes. And so that's ready here. And then for dessert, we took the traditional tiramisu and we made it much, much lighter and much more waste friendly. And that was also quick. Um, we used the store-bought lady fingers. We layered it in with the, with the cream that we, that we made using a, an Italian meringue that gets cooked in a sugary syrup. And we layered all that in this little bowl. And um, so we have a delicious um, meal here today, and I want to thank you for joining us, and also thank you to uh, Calarisa's Farm Stand and um, Garden Center. They've always been very generous with us and donate um, a lot of the products that we use uh, uh, along with the meat for today's um, recipe. And also we want to thank uh, uh, Winfrey's Fudge and Chocolates for donating the chocolate that we use and so it really adds a big touch to our tiramisu that we made. Again, thank you very much and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.